Good morning, good what? Good morning, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. So welcome back to my Wednesday YouTube Photography 101 Live. And yes, once again, I'm super excited because I have a lot to talk about today. More specifically about accidents, about experience of accidents or horrible situations, uh, anything that I can share with you from my 15 years as a professional photographer. So uh, yes, a lot to talk about and I'm hoping you guys are going to join in as well and share your experience and, and what you uh, uh, what you have experienced, uh, you know, uh, when you go out traveling or just do something uh, with your camera, you know, whether you have any specific uh, accident that you want to shout about. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, you know, I have actually quite a lot of uh, 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 things I could you know relate to it uh, good afternoon Patrick yes oh wow from the UK absolutely yes we are in the afternoon and uh, even though today's yeah. it's raining again typical typical you know British weather I guess and uh, and so I don't feel too bad now the sun is not out so I'll, you know I'm staying indoors so I kind of feel good anyway so welcome back to my photography 101 <laughs> Uh, if you are new to this channel and you don't know what this is about, and, uh, this is more like a uh, in transition at the moment because I can't go out and shoot. So I'm doing these live videos and talk about photography and filmmaking in general. And hopefully you guys can ask me any questions that you would like to uh, relating to anything about photography and filmmaking. Uh, and also, yeah, anything about Olympus. Of course, I am an Olympus ambassador. Uh, yeah, actually, I haven't introduced myself. Actually, how rude am I? Right. My name is Jimmy Chang. I am a professional photographer and filmmaker for the last 15 years and also I am an Olympus ambassador so yeah I do use that kit exclusively yeah we've got one right here and I'm filming on right now with the EM1X as well so a little bit of change today because I don't know how long this live stream is going to last for I, I'm because you know you learn from experience right because I'm still kind of new to this whole live stream thing and uh uh, last time when I used the E1 Mark II and the Mark III, and the battery ran out, <laughs> and uh, of course, I mean, I, I know I can use the uh, uh, the USB uh, 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 power delivery, the PD options, to charge the uh, and use the camera at the same time with the X and also the uh, Mark III, um, but I didn't do that, so I, it just ran out, it just went dead completely. So um, now I'm using the One X. I have two batteries, so uh, it should be enough for at least three hours long of talk. Now, I don't think I'm going to talk for three hours, but just, just in case, I, I, I have enough juice to last through today's life. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, right. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is that uh, uh, accident, like experience and accidents. And they're going to be fun, right? <laughs> uh, only because like now I can laugh about it. I, I so remember, you know, the first time it ever happened to me when I'm working, uh, it, it really struck me. And uh, it, it, I, I was scared, you know, like, uh, Okay, let's 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 go back a little bit now. Let's let's start off gently. So before I go into the horrible stuff, um, and, uh, so even before I became a photographer, you know, things do happen, right? You know, if you're traveling, whether you're just going out, you know, uh, to work or something, you know, accidents do happen. Um, so like, of course, you know, if you pay a lot of money for your camera equipment, so when you go traveling, if something happened to it or to happen to yourself. It's not going to be good while taking photos. And uh, this is something that, you know, is about the, the theme of today. And then, and then uh, uh, I'm hoping that yeah, I can hear some of your stories. So that will, that will be quite fun. Right. Uh, so that's from my beginning, from my very first accident. And then uh, uh, I lost my lens. Uh, well, that's kind of as accident, right? <laughs> I lost my lens and, then, uh, 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 and I couldn't find it. And the thing is, yeah, uh, that was sort of like a, a my, beginning uh, uh, of my career as a, as a professional. So like, I wasn't even an amateur and uh, so I charged people to do the job. So what, what's the worst that happened? You know, at the time I didn't have enough money so I don't have a lot of spare lenses or spare bodies and things. So when you lose a lens that you may need to use for that shoot, it's devastating. It's like, ah, you know, you've got to kill yourself for that. And, and, and that did happen. But in a way, you know, as, as that, that's how I learned, you know, to be to improvise. And lucky that I do have a spare lens, so uh, I would be able to use that lens and utilize it creatively, uh, creatively, you know, to to conduct the the photo shoot. But I, and I remember, like, you know, um, uh, I don't, I still actually to this day, I still don't know how I lost that lens, and then uh, uh, I've never found it. Uh, I didn't find any holes or anything in my bag. That's that's a strange thing, and I, and I have no idea. It just mysteriously disappeared 
from from my camera bag. And then, uh, good morning, good morning. Wow, I've got quite a few people here. Good morning, George. Good morning, Leon. Good morning, Gorge. Yeah, Austria. Wow, cool, awesome. Great to see you guys there. Uh, welcome, welcome to my Photography 101 Live. And uh, hello again from Singapore. That's cool. Right. Uh, Okay, yeah, just, just before I move on, and I uh, just wanted to tell you that a lot of these uh, live stream comments and things that I, uh, there's a little bit of delay here between you type and I, uh, but by the time I see it, it's usually about half a minute to a minute delay. So uh, keep typing, I'll see it eventually on here. Victor, hey, hello, Slo Slovenia, woo, fancy place, I like that. Right, okay, I always love, I was, always want to visit you guys, and then uh, this, it sounds beautiful there, and I have to come here. I have to go. I have to go there really uh, one day just to check out, you know, myself. But anyway, hey, good evening. Woohoo! That's absolutely cool. Yeah, I'm good. My family's are well. Thank you for asking. Thank you, and hope all of you guys are safe and well as well. Health is definitely the most important, right, at the moment. And uh, Espanol, hey, hello, hola. That's good. <laughs> just talk about it. I just posted one uh, one photo on Instagram uh, about me in uh, 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 Corinna, and uh, it's a beautiful place. And I did some drone shot there. That was actually a project that I was working on for supposed to continue this year, but because of the pandemic, I won't be able to travel. So that's that's not too good. So like now, now my project has to be, uh, uh, you know, next year now. I have to continue the, uh, the project next year. Hi from Denmark, Peter. Hello, good afternoon. Well done. Wow, happy to see you. Got see you. All. <laughs> Favorite Olympus lens. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna talk about lenses in a minute. But let's go continue my theme today. It's all about accident, you know. And uh, so I I didn't know what happened. You know, my lens just mysteriously vanished from my pack camera bag. And even to this date, I still can't find that lens. Like there was no hole for my camera bag, so no one stole it. And then uh, I went to a job, opened the camera bag, and it, it just gone. And uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's freaked me out because, uh, you know, <laughs> Because you, you plan the shoot, you know, you, have, you, you carry all the lenses that you need uh, to a photo shoot and you know you're going to use it, right? Then what happened? Um, then uh, uh, it, it just vanished. And so you can't really use that lens uh, that you had in your mind for that vision that you have. Uh, uh, so what happened was I just had to con confine myself into just one lens. I mean, at the time I was quite poor as a photo photographer, so I was only able to carry two lenses or only afford to buy two lenses. Uh, so I had the other lens, which is a prime lens. It was, uh, it was luckily, it was a, a, a standard prime, which is a 50 mil. Uh, full frame at the time I was. Uh, so I was using the 50, just one lens for, for the entire shoot. So I had to think differently to the other lens, which was the 24 to 70 I had in my mind. And then a lot of wide angle, I couldn't do wide angle, of course. So I had to kind of uh, 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 make do with the 50, that the only lens I have for that body. Uh, so that was my first accident, but it wasn't really an accident, but just something happened. Um, but then, Another case is that I, I had really horrible, horrible experience. And, uh, I, and I'm not joking. I actually did talk about it. Uh, I think it was probably two years ago now on my, one of my YouTube channel uh, videos about the Billingham bags, the Billingham Headley Small review. Uh, I, I actually talked about it. Um, the, uh, the, the thing is really, really uh, uh, horrible because <laughs> I had my uh, Leica at the time and then I had my Leica uh, digital and film camera plus one more lens in my uh, Hatley Billingham and so I was walking on the street someone knocked my shoulder right okay this time it wasn't stolen but not my shoulder so my shoulder uh, my my back fell onto the floor it was I was walking on the roadside then you can kind of imagine what happened here yeah? the back rolled to the road down to the middle of the road and a car ran over it I was like oh sh I'm gonna swear, but I'm not, because my kids are around here, so I'm not gonna swear. But like, I was gonna say the F word, you know, like really loud, because <laughs> that, that's exactly what I did. Um, then my back was in the middle of the road, get ran over by a car, and I had my two Leica cameras. Plus, you know, there's, there's one lens on each of the camera, plus one extra lens, so three Leica lenses in that bag. That, that bag worth about eight, 10,000 pounds, I can't remember exactly how much now. See, that was me at the time. I was like, oh no, no. Uh, even though you know, I had, ex uh, you know, the professional insurance, but like, it's still, you know, like you just like kind of, ah, oh, what happened? I was screaming to the guy who knocked my shoulder, you know, like, I, you know, he, whether he did it intentionally or not, I'm, you know, I'm not here to judge anybody, but you know, just, 
it just happened. You know, he knocked my shoulder at the back, just went straight to the floor, and car, car ran over it. And then it was dragged for a little bit as well. So like, uh, I was so scared. So Wes quickly went up there. You know, I was shot for like about good half a minute. You know, like I, I, I was literally froze. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't move my body. You know, just like. Oh my entire kit, my, all my, almost all my savings in that bag, and then it's, it's gone. I uh, went to that pick, up my, pick up my bag, opened the bag up. To my surprise, yeah, all my cameras <laughs> was fine. <laughs> uh, I didn't know how it survived. Uh, the only thing, there was something damaged, yeah? Uh, the, uh, okay, the back was damaged, the back was uh, got holes in it because the, the car ran over it and dragged it for a little bit. So the, the surface of the back was basically about five holes in it. And uh, all the leather was scratched up, of course. And then and there, the, but the camera body is actually perfectly intact. Um, there was one damage from one of the lens hood, which is the metal lens hood from one of the lenses. The, it was completely bent. Um, but apart from that, the lens was fine. There was no damage whatsoever. The, the, uh, I checked it again and again afterward, you know, like, and nothing happened. So I was super happy about it. Uh, but that was an accident. That was a horrible accident, I'm telling you. It's really, really horrible. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, you know, I don't want similar things happen to you. You know, I'm pretty sure that you might have some story to tell. So it's really, you know, something that I would not forget. Uh, and what happened afterward is that that bag uh, that I had, which remind me so much, it became part of this, like my journey as a photographer, right? You know, that after that accident happened, it was something so, so like memorable. Uh, but that, that bag got stolen. Yeah, that, that Billingham bag got stolen in one Christmas when I went out and then... Um, and I was crying, <laughs> I was crying, not because I lost my camera yet yeah, or anything in the bag yet. Yeah. This time I'm actually crying because my bag was stolen. And then um, that bag had that memory in it. And I was just, oh God, what happened? Someone stole my bag with that, <laughs> that all these holes and all this memory that, in, in, you know, that carried me for, for many years. Um, so I was really sad. And uh, uh, so I got, Another building in uh, Hadley Small, uh, which is an identical bag, but it's different, right? You know, when you have that lift with you for so many years and you remember the scar, you remember the, the, the accidents, that incident, and uh, it's something that you really, really, you know, reminded me of that. And it's gone, you know, someone stole it. And they probably stole it for whatever they think might have in the bag, yeah, whether it's going to be wallet or money and, uh, and something like that. But it's not. It's it's, it's about that memory, yeah. And I'm pre I'm pretty sure he he or she whatever chucked the bag straight after whatever he got what was inside the bag. And uh, I had some cash in there, so they they definitely got that. Um. Uh, but yeah, the memory's gone, you know. And that's really really horrible. So let's let's have a look at some of you guys. And good afternoon, Ricky. Good afternoon, Michael. And uh, let's see what else you guys have. <laughs> Oh, Jeff, you're from Taiwan. Well done. Mike Shepard from Canada. Hey, I saw you on Facebook. Thank you for uh, uh, con communicating with me on Facebook. That's awesome. And uh, let's see. Good afternoon. Uh, evening now, Burana. Yes, absolutely. Cool. Robert, yeah, what's my favorite uh, Olympus lens? Um, if you're new here, I'm telling you now because uh, everybody knows my favorite Olympus lens or the, my most used Olympus lens is... It's 17mm 1.2 Pro. That's my most used lenses uh, in the entire lineup. And I love that lens. I film with it almost exclusively. I shoot photo with, with it exclusively. I'm going to show you some photo of that in a minute. And uh, it's a fabulous lens. It's just my preference. I, I love the 35 focal length in the full frame terms. And that's as close to it as possible, uh, as, you know, 35 mil and also 1.2 allows me to do a lot of uh, low light shooting and and that yeah, is it's absolutely fun right okay and uh, George is there a difference in distortion between the lower 7.5 and 9 right okay um this is the Q&A um okay let me let me bring up to I'm actually shooting on the 7.5 f2 lower lens at the moment. So this is exactly what you will get if you're using the uh, 7.5 millimeter lens. Um, there, there is some 
uh, distortion differences between the 7.5 and the 9 millimeters. Uh, if you haven't checked out my review between the two lenses, you should because I actually have the shot uh, side by side and you can see the distortion between the two. The 7.5 does have distortion, uh, a slight barrel distortion. You can fix it in pros, it's very easy to fix. Uh, but the 9 9mm is actually very straight, is what they call the zero distortion, zero D. Uh, very amazing lens, uh, but obviously you trade it off with uh, with the 2.8 instead of a 2 aperture. So, you know, the 7.5 that I'm using right now is actually faster. Uh, and also because it's wider, so you can use it in quite a confined environment. And you imagine like what you see right now, I'm actually arm length, yeah, I'm actually touching the lens hood now. So this is how how far the camera is with me at the moment. I'm still able to maintain a lot of, you know, the environment with, uh, within this frame. So it's great for shooting in very confined and, and, and small environments. So that's really, really nice. Um, I, I do like this lens, it's really good. And apart from this being manual focused, but you know, you can get away with it uh, because such a wide angle, the depth of field is, is quite deep. So you'll be able to get away with it quite a lot. Uh, but yeah, you still need to focus it properly if you want to get a critical sharpness at the point that you want to uh, want to focus on. Okay, let's see if there are any other questions here. Deki from Indonesia. Yes, I remember you, I remember you. Thank you for coming in again. And uh, that's absolutely fantastic. And the EM1 Mark III arrives safely. Oh, you got the EM1 Mark III. Well done. Well, let me know what you shot and then uh, we, can, we can share it from here. And uh, Glenn from Australia, Queensland. Way, well, cool, awesome, awesome stuff. And okay, Leon got a story to share. Let's, let's read it, let's read it, okay. I dropped my 72.8 macro lens and uh, on the granite tabletop. The lens <laughs> could not auto focus. Oh dear. Uh, lucky I had a friend in the cup and repair his soul there. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I hope there wasn't a reason to switch. And uh, <laughs> okay, well, talking about dropping lenses, yeah, I have lots of experience about dropping gear. And uh, in fact, I don't have it at the moment. I lend my uh, my other older uh, M1 Mark II body to, an, uh, to a friend, um, but that body, if you remember, I uh, 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 one of our uh, M1 Mark II review uh, videos, that was two years ago now, I think, um, I talked about dropping my M1 Mark II. Uh, yeah, it, I, I dropped, I drop the cameras and lenses all the time as a pro, you know, it, it, I guess that's one thing that you, uh, when you're working pro, you kind of expected it, you know, it's not, it's not about how much you want to care about your equipment, but accident, like I mentioned, accidents do happen, whether it be something knocking you, or you just rest the camera on the table, you want to change the lens, change the battery, something, and some kid or whatever just came in, rushed to the, to the table and knocked your gear and all your equipment down on the floor, it happens you know like I, I it happened to me so many times at weddings and stuff like that so uh yeah I, I wouldn't be surprised but this is the reason why as a professional we buy insurance you know just making sure that we you know we are covered in a way and uh but you know as a photographer i'm, I'm i think I'm, I'm quite a careful uh photographer in general you know i do like to keep my stuff uh nice and tidy and clean and things like that you know whenever i go to dusty thing uh, dusty places to shoot and uh, afterward i will clean my camera properly uh, uh, and also, you know, if you don't know, Olympus do have a, uh, a professional service. I'm not entirely sure about your country, but in Europe, uh, we have what they call the professional service. Uh, they have different levels there. So you can actually send your camera to Olympus uh, directly for an in, in, in annual checkup and services. Uh, for both the lens uh, or lenses, depending on the package, and your body completely cleaned up, they will actually disassemble your camera. Uh, clean all the joints, all the buttons, and any wear or worn out buttons, they will replace it for you. So like when a camera comes back, it almost looks like new. So like that is a very, very good thing to do. Um, so if you haven't heard of it, try to ask about your local uh, distributor or Olympus to see whether they offer similar service. But in Europe, we're quite lucky to have that service. And uh, so every time when we have a really horrible accident or, or something happens to the camera, we send it off and they will, they will actually kind of freshen the whole system up for you. And then uh, you, you get almost like a new lens and new body back that's good uh okay see if you, uh, you, any of you got other other uh experience um <laughs> michael actually said uh, yeah like a lens is a prob is uh worth more than a lens. <laughs> uh, actually you might you might be right and uh i Depending on the lens, and uh, if some of the modern lenses, uh, like a lens suit, can be fairly expensive, but still not as expensive as the older ones, because they, they don't make them anymore. Um, for instance, the the, the 35 
uh, millimeter Summilux, the older one, the version one and version two, the metal hood alone, if you get a good, really perfect condition, and uh, you're probably asking for 500 pound plus just for the lens hood. And uh, this crazy price I know, And um, but I, I had two, but they're all banged up. And then uh, and uh, the, the, the lens hood was, uh, I think the, the one that came with the, the, the camera, uh, it was already banged up there. I got another one, uh, just in case I lose that one. So that one was a little bit banged up as well, but I still had to pay £160 for it. That was expensive. But if a good condition, yeah, easily £500. Um, some of the modern lens hood, they're probably about 250 and something like that. They're still expensive compared to, you know, like <laughs> Olympus lens hood is probably about uh, £30. You know, it's still expensive, you know, for plastic, but they are official, so you know, like it's a proper, proper thing that you can do the the clicking thing, and you know, so uh, uh, it's essential stuff. It also protects the different elements of the lens. So I always use the lens hood, uh, depending on the situation. Uh, apart from filming, because when I have to use an ND filters and it's an obstruct, you know, putting on the lens hood, so I won't use it. Uh, but other than that, yes, I, I I like to use the lens hood as much as I can. Um, right. <laughs> okay. First footprint photography, here we go. Let's see, talking creative accidents. And I was studying photography, I was doing a fashion shoot, completely forgot about the flat sing speed. <laughs> As I should film. Oh no, you didn't, you did not. So you wasted the entire, entire session. There's no, nothing left. <laughs> oh dear me, oh gosh. Well, actually that's another thing about, because um, I, I, I am a self-taught photographer, so I didn't actually study any photography which is something that I want to discuss with you maybe in future one-on-one live as well. Uh, but so I, I learn from mistakes a lot, you know, and I, I, despite how much I read, how much I learn from, you know, whoever inspires me, workshops, whatever, I, I did a lot of those. Uh, but uh, flashing speed is something also, you know, that completely, uh, uh, I was confused at the beginning of my career. And uh, I, I really remember that as well. And <laughs> it messed up my first couple of shoots and uh, lucky, uh, it wasn't a paid job and uh, I was kind of just asking friends to help out just to, for practicing. But yeah, the entire shoot, the entire, entire day of, you know, photograph were completely wasted. Uh, oh, that, I, 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 can, I can imagine that. I, I, I feel for you, mate. I feel for you. Um, George mentioned about what do I think about the 30 millimeters 1.4. Uh, it's a good lens. It's a really cracking lens and uh, I, I do like it. I do like that lens a lot. Uh, although it's a, it's more like an APS-C lens, um, but you know you can adapt to Micro Four Third, which is actually okay. Uh, uh, I've seen people using it, so it's actually okay. Right. Um, <laughs> okay. Evic Knight mentioned about billing and bags a lot, but I was wondering if you have any suggestion for keeping cameras safe on holiday. Worried that uh, Billingham screams expensive stuff inside. Uh, Funny enough, I think it's only you if you carry a very bright color Billingham bags uh, that may attract attention. Some of them more lower key camera bags should be okay, and that's exactly my reason for saying you know um, not not today, not in my photography one one, but on my uh, uh, morning Facebook live uh, uh, videos. I actually talked about it uh, uh, sometimes ago, some time ago, about keeping your bag uh, dirty. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or let let it, let it just let it grow so gracefully, you know, and then uh, don't don't clean it too often. Don't make it look brand spanking new. Uh, it will it would just catch people's eyes all the time. Um, so a lot of my camera bag looks aged, and uh, they are naturally aged because I, I use it a lot, and um, so I don't tend to clean the uh, ex uh, the exterior of the bag. And uh, so I, if I got marks of dirt, so I just leave it there unless it's ketchup or something and then that's that's different um but most of the time you know i just leave it uh, so I, I i wouldn't think that billing him actually screams expensive but of course you know if you're looking for alternatives there are many others uh, uh like uh like uh, some of these street street lines that i think manfrotto does that and uh, uh another good one is actually uh uh, depending on your budget, uh, Gissel is quite good. Uh, Giss Gissel had the Millennium range. It, they actually look more like a business briefcase and business case than a camera bag. So that may get around with the suspicious, uh, expensive camera thing inside. Um, uh, but other than that, you know, I think a lot of canvas uh, bags can look quite, you know, street, streety, 
can I use the word streety? <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, it's quite a, a normal bag. Uh, not if you use like a, a owner bag, for instance, owner bag, you know, this full leather, you know, that that could also scream expensive as well. Uh, it is quite difficult to be honest. You know, if 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 they are genuine. Uh, camera thief you know they really know what they look for anyway and uh, they know that you have a camera back uh, yeah I, I guess just be just be careful you know and then uh, when you're traveling it doesn't matter what bag you use but you know like i mentioned i know billingham do some crazy colors and just don't follow those and if you want to use buy billingham you can buy just pure black or the normal uh, uh, khaki color, you know, just something slightly low key colors. Then the high, high attention red colors, I have red Billingham bags, trust me. And uh, like red, yellow, blue, and that kind of color, that will catch attention, definitely unnecessary attention. Um, but usually I would just say, if you go to crowded places, put your bag to the front, you know, not leaving in the back and uh, just, just look after your gear. And that would be my suggestion. No matter how well you conceal your camera gear, uh, if they are camera thief, they will be looking out for you and then they will see they will look at you and they will observe you What sort of thing you take out from the back? They're not as dumb as you know And and what people might just think about just grab the whole bag if they are really serious about taking your camera They'll be watching you and observing you what sort of thing you have So they will see what you pull up from the back instead of actually looking at your camera back, right? So that's a, that's another thing. So just to, just be careful, you know, that would be my advice and uh, okay, let's see uh, what else in here. <laughs> so you did process the film. <laughs> uh, turn and show it cut off by the shutter. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I know. I know how. I, I, I completely understand because I, I had the same experience before when I first uh, learned about flash photography. <laughs> So Patrick, you got something. So no camera accidents, but had all my... Oh, no, you did not. That's another thing about analog, right? Oh, didn't you have one of those um, uh, X-ray proof uh, film bags? And uh, but I had a couple of those because I, I used to shoot film a lot when I travel with the film as well. So I put those uh, negatives and positive uh, into this uh, basically uh, X-ray proof bag. It just... Uh, a very heavy duty line on back uh, inside they got like tin foil so they they just bounce all the uh, all the um uh x-rays so um oh my god that is that is disaster oh no oh so you lost all of them <laughs> oh no oh that is that is horrible you know that, that's the thing you know people keep saying you know oh, x-ray would not damage anything and blah 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 and uh look in a way, fortunately, that it doesn't affect digital stuff these days, and then uh, yeah, but I can I feel for you, mate. You lose the entire, you know, thing. You know, that's that's no good. That's no good at all. Uh, right. All the oh, you got the original building event when it first came out. Wow, awesome stuff. Which one was that? I bet it's a five 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 zero, right? No. 555 that's the original um that is amazing bag and then guess how much they're selling it now that that original bag in the uk is selling uh i think retail for 600 pound or 650 gosh that's expensive yeah billing is expensive <laughs> right okay jeff hi from usa excellent cool awesome stuff right and uh right let's see and uh, can you ask Olympus to consider in the future to make a 4K camera unlimited time limit? And you need a face detect AF. Okay, Jeff. Um, yeah, I did, of course, mean to ask about these things. And uh, I think a lot of uh, uh, people who shoot with the Olympus gear ask the same thing. It's more to do with their decision whether they want to make it as a broadcast camera. Because um, I think, uh, I'm not sure you're aware of it, a lot of companies who really, uh, so remove that uh limit the 30 minute limits is uh is considered as broadcast cameras uh to do that you have to apply for license uh, depending on location of course you know uk us uh, they may all have different sort of applications and also uh, procedures to register uh, such cameras um, olympus has told me about it because they will have uh, if if they do they will have to either charge uh, 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 or built in that, that cost into the price of the camera. I know they can do it, but at this moment in time, I don't think they want to make a broadcast camera in a way. And uh, it can be fixed in firmware. 
you know, but whether whether they want to do it or not, that's another thing. Because uh, I know I know what you're saying. Because I'm shooting and filming with the uh, EM1 Mark III and the EM1 X is phenomenal. The the face detect AF is really really cool, and uh, especially if you use gimbal a lot, you know, gimbal work is you know really cool because you can rely on the autofocus you know almost exclusively uh on the em1 mark three especially uh, it just got like the newly improved face detection it's it's really good and uh, mounted on the uh Zhiyun, uh weber lab s a uh, weber s uh, a gimbal uh, i just left it in auto and they just you know in terms of focusing it tracks everything is phenomenality the missing is really low the miss rate is very low and there is actually phenomenal to work with um but yeah and i can understand about the limit and it's depending on your situation i know people could sometimes leave the camera in one corner and just trying to continue filming and the whole thing uh it can be annoying that you can't go over 30 minutes i, I totally understand uh in my situation however uh because I, I make films so i so unlikely i will have a an anything that is running over 30 minutes um so that that doesn't affect me at at all at the moment uh, but yeah i will feed your comment of course to olympus and i will definitely um ask them to implement it hopefully you know like uh, the more voices we have the, the better right and uh, so i'm going to pass your message over and then uh, let them decide whether they want to do but i know for a fact that they are working a lot on the video side of it so we have to stay tuned even i don't know as much yet uh hopefully we can see some dramatic improvement over the next couple of years in terms of video capabilities and the omd cameras uh we already seen the af is phenomenal it's definitely one of the best out there if not the best on the uh, on the Micro Four Thirds side, even on the APS-C, uh, is on, on par with some of the best at the moment because I've tried it uh, 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 with other cameras as well, and uh, it's it's really really something. So thanks, Jeff, and I'll definitely pass it over. Right, okay. Morning, Vicky. <laughs> morning, Squire. <laughs> it's not morning. It's it's afternoon. I know. I I, I might look sleepy still. Yeah, I'm sleepy all the time. <laughs> <You know? laughs> she talked about the Leica lens hood. I see. She talked about the Leica lens hood, and uh, yeah, they they are they are just ridiculous. I don't know why they charge so much for lens hood. You know, just a piece of metal, right? And uh, Dicky said I dropped my camera twice, and uh, first on my EM10 Mark II as a travel. Oh, Athens, nice. I've been to Athens, but that was the time when I was still using film cameras. That's how long ago that was. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, of course, you know, it depends on where you drop it. And uh, I, not so much on the Olympus. I dropped my Olympus camera quite a few times and lucky they all survive. And, but I have dropped uh, my Canons and some of the other cameras. Uh, some break, some didn't. And uh, <laughs> sometimes just depending on your luck. Uh, it, it's fun, it's fun. <laughs> it's not fun, actually, what I'm saying. Okay, and then, oh, you got a second one as well. So I fell down in snow in the EM1 Mark III. Oh, that's recent then. Okay, and then um, totally covered snow, but still <laughs> the greatness of weather seal. Absolutely, the Olympus cameras are definitely renowned for the weather seal, which is why I want to show you this picture here. Uh, let me just give you that picture right now. Oh, where is it? Oh, hang on a second. Uh, oh, my picture has disappeared. That's strange. Uh oh, it's there. <laughs> it's very tiny. I just found it. Okay, there we go. Right, you probably can't see it, and uh, this is one of the reasons why I love using Olympus gears because uh, I had failures using uh, other systems before. I'm just putting it right in the middle of the frame and just hopefully enlarge it a little bit uh, so you guys can see it. Uh, the so this was one of the proposed show shoot that I did uh, earlier this year, just before the lockdown, fortunately. And uh, for a gorgeous couple, and uh, they actually asked me to take the proposal in Hampton Court. Uh, it was <laughs> chucking down with rain, yeah, I'm not joking. It was really, it doesn't quite look at it on, on, on the camera, uh, on, on this particular photo, you see it in a minute. Um, it was wet, it was so wet. And uh, But as you know, the Olympus camera is fantastic with the weather seal and uh, I was using the M1X which you can almost swim with this camera so uh, I had no worry about it and I know that uh, for a fact that when I used Canons and uh, uh, similar situations in China uh, it was really like torrential rain really heavy uh, I was shooting on the street uh, with my 5D uh, it ceased to work well I can still take photo but I can't 
select anything else. You know, like the menu button doesn't work, the playback doesn't mean, men, menu doesn't work, the ISO button didn't work. <laughs> oh gosh, man, so like, I, I just have to make do whatever I could at the time. And I had to quickly rush back to the hotel, put it on the heater through the night to dry it off. And lucky it, it kind of went back uh, to live, you know, it's come back to live again, and uh, so it, I could continue to shoot with that thing for the next day. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it was it was something, right? And then it, this photo, you probably see it a little bit better uh, about the raindrop, and you can definitely see it now. And and uh, is it's definitely very heavy. You can see the background actually. The background you can kind of see very hazy. It's actually all rain, and uh, it was some rain that was. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple more photos later, right? Uh, Full third, full third. So, okay, good day, thank you. And uh, I'm safe, thank you very much for asking, thank you. And if I had to choose, would you recommend just the 12 to 40 2.8 or 3 prime lenses? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, you don't know me too well. Okay, I'm just joking. Uh, I am a prime guy, so I would always suggest people to take primes over. Uh, zoom um, first because it's slightly simpler, slightly slower, and also a lot faster in terms of aperture. Uh, 2.8 is great. Don't get me wrong; it's really good. And the 12 to 40 is fantastic. It's very good and compact for that size. 2.8 aperture, constant and rugged build is really, really good. Uh, because the 1.8 lens obviously is not pro lenses, and uh, so they are not weather sealed to the same level of the camera. So depending on what you use, this is up. This one thing that I would like to, would like you to consider if you decide to work with your camera in rainy situations and I would take the 12 to 40 2.8 over the 1.8 prime lenses even though they are probably superior but because they're not weather sealed so they uh, I wouldn't bank on that too much and uh, uh, unless you go for the 1.2 pro lenses but obviously that the cost will be phenomenally higher because it's three pro lenses instead of just one pro uh, but they, they are good lenses the 1.8 trio the 17 25 48 that you mentioned here is really brilliant i have all of them and uh, they all perform really really flawlessly especially for street photography and travel they are really good um also do i recommend the 75 to 300 yeah yeah this is cool you know like you get a 600 meter equivalent full frame reach is just like <laughs> really long and uh, and it's quite small as well for what it is uh, so for traveling I guess it's it's good to have a long lens sometimes you just want to get close to something and uh, the 75 to 300 is definitely worthwhile getting and uh, and uh, yeah it's, it's it's a pretty cool lens definitely right and George okay let's see how much do I <laughs> <laughs> oh dear and uh well to be quite honest you know i i from youtube itself i don't really earn a lot of money and uh, that's being truthful for you guys and uh, unless i uh, reach to a a mega level like you know having one million subscribers or something like that so you guys will help me spread the love all over and ask them to all subscribe me and put on the thumb and because any sharing any liking any commenting would boost the algorithm and uh to basically ask the YouTube to recommend more. Uh, so everything helps, so yeah. And uh, hopefully one day I can make enough income on YouTube and continue uh, you know, my journey to share my uh, love in, uh, in photography, filmmaking, and also my skill, because I'm, I'm doing a lot of these things for free almost. And uh, in fact, all the videos we've done so far, we, we're basically making a loss because we we put in a lot of money and time just to do this. And uh, uh, but I, I I love it. You know, this is part of me. I love to engage with people who are also in love with photography and filmmaking. And uh, this this is something I really truly believe. Uh, there is no boundaries in photography. You know, these photographers all bring us together and sharing. You know, whatever we see to uh, see the world differently. You know, to to experience the world differently. Because uh, you know, I can't travel to everywhere in the world. Right, I don't think anybody can. So like, I'm relying on seeing other people's photographs to appreciate the beauty of their, their part of the world and, uh, and also the culture. You know, this is something I really enjoy watching, you know, like uh, on TV, on Facebook, on Instagram, anything. I always look at pictures and other people's uh, uh, film or, or pictures. Is there, they, what inspire me? You know, like if one day, if I earn enough money, of course, I would travel around the world and see the world myself. But 
you know, not easy thing to do, right? And uh, but I'm hoping I will be there, and then uh, I'm hoping that you guys will support me, and then uh, you remember to do this and subscribe our uh, the channel, and also yeah, keep sharing, keep talking about it, and it will help us dramatically. Trust me. And thank you very much. And also you can, you can also buy me a coffee from that link down here. <laughs> That's a more more short term thing. You can help me out, and then uh, so you can buy me coffee there. Uh, that's that's all good but anyway yes uh, going back to something else now um uh so like yeah just to continue that question just very briefly yeah i do earn my money through my actual full-time career as a professional photographer and filmmaker that's where my income comes in uh, but this year as you know the coronavirus the covid19 dependent pandemic is killing all my business this year so i have nothing this year at all and uh, we shall see um okay kona hi good morning good morning good morning and uh, hello hi everybody uh <laughs> vicky is, is 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 going for coffee again right just sewed and uh, just so the epl 340 to 40 a pancake for 130 140 pounds get back to me i'm not entirely sure uh i'm not entirely sure uh the epl9 uh, epl3 is quite old i know the camera doesn't really worth a lot of money and uh, but the lens i i think you should still be able to get something 130 sounds a bit low for me and uh i don't know i don't know about your market uh we shall see and uh looking for a nice bag for ian one mark three and uh, the 12 to 100 combo right one second oh by the way i do have a delivery for food so uh, is i can see the, the truck just stopped by now and uh, i may have to stop for five minutes so if you can allow me to just collect my food i'll be back in a second so uh just one second i'll be back in in, in about five minutes okay All right. Yeah, not great. You step back, I'll just drop them down there. Yeah, drop them there, that's fine, thank you. Thank you very much. It's just two bags? No, there's more to come. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Last one, thank you very much. Okay. Cheers. Ooh, I'm back, I'm back. Apology, apology for my uh, sudden, <laughs> sudden disappearance. Uh, and uh, yeah, just because uh, we had to order some food online and uh, I can't really control the delivery time, as you know, that is quite precious at the moment, all these delivery slots that, um, that we have. So uh, yeah, it's all good now. So the food has been delivered, so we are good for another week. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, oh, in oh in US, right? Okay. Um, nice back for the EM One Mark Three and the Twelve to One Hundred combo. Um, you, if you just this particular combo, I think you can possibly have a, a, a relatively small bag. Um, anything like from the uh, what was it called now? Um, uh, 
I I'll come back to it. You know, <laughs> all I can think of at the moment is billing because someone was asking about billing earlier. I'll, I'll come back to you. And um, Robert from Long Island, New York. Hey, New Yorker, it's cool. Uh, excellent, excellent stuff. Thank you. Getting a late. Good night. All oh, right. Okay. Good. Good evening. Bye now. Good night for that. <laughs> and uh, wash hand. Wash hand. I did wash hand, yes, because I had to, right? And uh, after the delivery, and uh, yeah, it's, I don't know, don't you feel fit, feel weird about, you know, this uh, whole pandemic thing, you know, this social distance thing. And uh, even the drive, the driver had to, when they delivered all the food, they had to leave it on the doorstep. I had to pick it up like back by back, you know, just from the door inside. Uh, and uh, yeah, we really, really something. Okay, David, good, eat good uh, in, 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 in the States, is still morning? Just about morning, right? And then, uh, good morning. <laughs> and uh, also, right, okay, right, here we go. I was taking photos with E1 in Santorini, a nice place, absolutely nice place, stunning. And I was looking through the viewfinder and started to fall as a Mr. Graham. <laughs> oh, wow, my God, really? Ooh, and uh, okay, wow, lucky then, you really, <laughs> and uh, well, I, I, had, I had many of these incidents before because I, Sometimes when I shoot, I like to walk backward. I want to show you one photo just very quickly because I do that exactly uh, just like that. Uh, like this photo here, right? So I, I was walking backward with this shot and then um, uh, <laughs> I fell back completely and just tumbled down with my, with my camera back and everything. I just rolled on top of my camera back and it was wet. You can see it's wet and uh, yeah, it, it, it it, it was something, but luckily nothing was damaged, and uh, the camera back protected a lot of my gears inside, and of course my my rugged and trusty uh, e Olympus EM1 is is also fine, and there are some scratches, but that's to be expected, and that's why a lot of professional cameras they always come with a lot of scuffs everywhere, just because that you know <laughs> these things happen, and uh, uh, yeah, it, it happens, but like fall, falling is is something that I'm really really scared uh, when it comes to it. Uh, no accident, but lady came to daddy shop. <laughs> but the new Kodak TLR. <laughs> I like that. I like. The, I like what Vicky said. And uh, looking through the viewfinder. Okay. Right. Question. Okay. Uh, see a. I see a question here. Can the Olympus Workspace software add art filters to photos taken with other brands of cameras, such as Fujifilm and Canon? Ah. Uh, Frankly, I don't know the answer. Uh, I can try for you. Uh, if you stay tuned, and then uh, uh, I will try that for you maybe uh, later on. Come back to me maybe on Facebook or uh, send, me, send me a direct message. I will answer you that question because uh, I haven't tried it myself um, because I, I, I really more or less exclusive Olympus stuff. I do have old Canon files that I have in my in my archive and I can see if I can load it up on the workspace to see if we can add filters. So I can't see the reason why not um, the, on JPEGs. So I'm not entirely sure. I, I have to find out, I have to find out. Um, so I don't want to mislead you any, in any way. So I don't want to give you false information. So uh, I, I'll check that myself. Uh, oh, okay. That's interesting, right? Uh, of course, these are all rumors, and uh, I know this, the Olympus does have a roadmap published. Uh, so everybody is speculating, including myself, even though I am a ambassador. But it, even if I know something, I'd possibly not allow to say anything. And uh, but it looks certainly very promising. Um, the fact is, I know that they are going to launch new products every year now. They're gonna have a very tight roadmap and then uh, having a lot of things released uh, over the next few years. Uh, so like, you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, a lot of the rumors saying that Olympus is gonna go bust and things like because they already have a massive roadmap uh, 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 done already for the future releases and uh, I, I know there are a couple of things that's coming in this year already uh, one of which would be uh, uh, the long wait long awaited the 150 to 400 millimeters pro zoom the, the white massive lens uh, I am actually personally really interested in that lens I really actually want to own one I don't know why I I may not be able to use it, but I just want to own one because that thing just looks cool, right? And uh, yeah, I, I can't, I can't wait. I really can't wait for that one. And uh, thank you, David. I deserve a like. Yes, yes, I got a like from Dave. <laughs> thank you very much. Awesome, uh, George. Okay, do I think Olympus make it at seven point five f two autofocus similar to the lower lens? 
Right, the one that I'm using now is the 7.5 f2 lower lens, exactly what I'm using to to conduct this live stream at the moment. Whether they're gonna make a autofocus version, I'm not entirely sure, simply because it won't be the same size. And uh, the lower lens is tiny, it's really, really tiny. Um, but once you add on the auto fold, uh, autofocus motors and other weather seal, whatever things that they may want to add into it, uh, it possibly about 30 to 40% thicker and uh, in terms of the size. Uh, so we, we shall see, it will be interesting because I think they, it would be quite uh, uh, beneficial for the ultra wide community because there are a lot of people using ultra wide lenses for let's say astro photography, nighttime photography, uh, uh, landscape for instance, and also uh, cityscape at nighttime. They would use these ultra wide lenses to do this sort of thing. And uh, uh, yeah, it, it could be interesting if they ever gonna bring one out. I'll be one of the first ones to snap it because I, <laughs> I like to see a autofocus version as well, like you. And uh, yeah, it, it would be awesome if they do that. So 130 euros, oh, that is, there's a little bit maybe on the low side and uh, especially the 12 to 42 pancake lens should, should worth the, you know, a little bit of money and they've not a lot, but there's uh, give or take, you know, like I'm not entirely sure, you know, you can possibly, possibly uh, get 150, 160 minimum for it. And uh, yeah, depending on whether you take it to a dealer or you take it on, on private. Private, you probably get a little bit more. Dealer, they always squeeze you, you know. <laughs> the camera dealer is always like this. <laughs> yeah, if you trade in, when you trade in or you're trying to sell it to a dealer, yeah, they, 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 they strangle you. <laughs> I remember when I, uh, when I was switching from Olympus, uh, sorry, from Canon to Olympus, I sold all my Canon gears. I sold most of the stuff um, uh, through private, you know, so I gained, I gained a lot of money back. Uh, not, obviously not in full price, uh, so I didn't lose that much, that's, that's my words. Uh, but I took one lens to a dealer and uh, that was the 85 millimeters 1.2 L2. That was the expensive lens, right? You know, you buy it new, it was like 1300 pound or 1400 pound at a time. And uh, he took it, have a guess, what's the, what, what money he paid me? 650 pound, you know, and it was uh, immaculate. I didn't even drop it, yeah? That lens was like new, I had box, you know, everything. And then uh, I even had the filter, you know, I told you I'd never use filter. I had the filter on that lens. And uh, yeah, it was really, really a nice lens. And, it's, and they looked up to say, oh, there's a little dust in the middle of the lens. And they knocked 200 pounds for it. That's why. <laughs> Don't go to dealers. And, uh, but at the time, you know, and uh, uh, I don't know why I actually gave it in. And then uh, I could have said it, I could have said it privately, uh, but I, I don't know why I didn't. And I just said, well, whatever, whatever, just just take it, man. I don't need it. Because that was my last lens to, to sell in, in my in my Canon bag. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm actually sad to see it go. I might get another one um, cheaper in, in the future to use on my film cameras. I still have some Canon film cameras lying around. And, uh, Sound of munching off camera. <laughs> that was hand washing. <laughs> Can you guys hear it? <laughs> oh dear me. Go buy a crumpler and uh, oh yeah, crumplers. Nice. Oh yeah, crumplers, yes. And uh, someone was asking about bags. Crumpler is quite nice. It's a little bit funky colors, but you can get some quite a nice um, neutral colors. That's quite nice to just carry around as a day bag as well. It's actually very, very nice. Okay, very good, very good, Vicky. I know I know you, you, you like crumpler. Uh, Okay, has anyone you put it in? Okay, well, it's a torture. <laughs> right, anyone, has anyone got any experience about putting uh, the EM5 Mark III through a weather seal torture test? Um, I haven't, in I don't know, in terms of t torturing your cameras, but I have washed it. After, uh, I use a toothbrush to wash it. And uh, because it was filled with sand, so I had to uh, use the toothbrush and run it through just running water, just like brush it, uh, all the loose dust out and then uh, all the sand and whatever grimes that stuck to it. And uh, so I, I just had to do that. So it wasn't really like a proper torture test. I know someone earlier was saying that they dropped, uh, it was, um, was it Dickie? I can't remember. Someone said that they put the, they dropped the, I uh, know uh, 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 it was Burana, it was Burana said it, you know, the, uh, Drop the E15 Mark III onto snow and just cover with it. Uh, that might be part of it, I guess. <laughs> and uh, breakfast time. All right. So it was breakfast time. That's good. Okay. Thanks, uh, David. Um, 
Excellent, cool stuff. I uh, had a crumpler, red one too. And uh, yeah, so a crumpler comes with different sizes and just like any other camera bags out there. And they're quite cool. Uh, I always like, I always like they're, they're kind of more like a casual street look on it. And then uh, it's, it's quite funky. They've got some funky colors as well. So you, you, you can look at it. Oh, Peak Design is another one. Yeah, Peak Design is quite nice. And I do like Peak Design's uh, uh, stuff. But nowadays, because, because they've become so popular among the the hipsters and, <laughs> and a lot of photographers. Uh, so like, I know someone asked about, you know, safety, about like people doesn't, uh, when you go traveling, you want people, uh, you know, to see that you have expensive stuff in your camera bags and stuff like that. Peak Design has becoming one of those now because it's such a popular ca a, a bag to use. And, and most people use those bags are people with a relatively nice cameras, like, you know, the top end Fujifilms and the top end, uh, uh, Sony and something like that, so uh, they know there are some expensive stuff inside. So uh, just be careful about about that, you know. And um, Patrick, uh, the Rob, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I actually haven't. To be honest, you know, um, I don't use Workspace a lot, and uh, uh, I know Rob did an extensive test on the Workspace, and so is uh, Peter Forsgaard, you know, and uh, my 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 friend in in Finland. Um, they both worked with the Workspace software quite a bit, and uh, I personally don't use Workspace myself. I do use Workspace to uh, do uh, live demos because it can tether with my in my EM1, and also uh, use the Workspace for processing high res mode shots. Uh, I, I just find it slightly more efficient that way because uh, uh, it also produced slightly better result for some reasons and compared to like Lightroom and all the other cameras uh, software that I use. Uh, so I, I, I don't use Workspace that much to be honest and that's not part of my workflow. And uh, oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, fungus in the lens. Okay, ooh, that's a... That's a very serious question because I did have fungus in my lens and not, not Olympus lenses, definitely not Olympus lenses. Um, but I did experience a uh, fungus in my uh, Leica lens, uh, my Yashica lenses, and also some of the older uh, uh, Canon FD lenses. Uh, how do you deal with it? That's a tricky question because uh, depending how severe the fungus is in the lens, um, because uh, if it's very light level uh, of, of fungus, you can remove the fungus by applying, um, oh, what is it? Vaseline cream, I think, something like that. I can't remember now. Uh, to be honest, I haven't done it for a while now because I, I used to do this sort of thing. I used to disassemble lenses myself and uh, because they're all manual lenses, they're fairly easy to disassemble and reassemble them. And so I take it apart. I actually took out all the individual elements and, and, um, and clean them myself. Uh, when I have fungus, there was, if you Google something about fungus, I'm pretty sure they will all recommend similar things. You can use cream that you can get on just on pharmacy. Uh, it works. Uh, it works a wonder. Yeah, you just rub the cream on it, and you get rid of the the fungus uh, quite easily. All you need to do afterward is just to, after you clean them with the cream because it's oily, and then you just have to wipe it with uh, alcohol, and then uh, just buff it off, just and it'll go back to normal. But sometimes when the fungus is very very bad, and um, it actually etch into the lens surface itself. And you have a problem, and you won't be able to get rid of it because you uh, you actually have a damaged element inside your lens, and in that case, is basically uh, 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 not not recommended uh, to to fix it. You know, there's nothing you can fix really because the the element's damaged now. Uh, so I, I wouldn't do that. Uh, I, uh, if I were you, if uh, if it's really severe, the only reason, you, well, the only thing you can see if it's severe is how big the patch is. If it's really big and going across the entire lens and uh, is, it basically means ruin. Um, this is one of the reasons why I would prefer to use uh, uh, weather seal lenses these days, uh, especially the work that I do that I go outside a lot, I shoot in the rain or other really horrible environments all the time. Uh, having a weather seal kit, you know, the body and the lens means that nothing is going to go inside uh, and you're less likely to have fungus you know uh, uh, elements and stuff like that it more likely to see in older and more vintage lenses also uh, through manual lenses as well uh, because they have gaps everywhere you know they're not weather seals it, it's very likely you you can gather moistures inside the lens if you're going to uh, humid places for instance and you don't store it back in a uh, uh, human control uh, cabinets you know uh, which 
you, you, yeah, that's another thing you should buy if you are thinking that you're going to be in a very humid environment. You know, you have to get one of these uh, humidity control cabinets. You can store all your lenses in there, making sure that, making sure it has the correct level. It doesn't grow any fungus, for instance. Although uh, fungus can be killed by UV, uh, so if you do if you do use your lens a lot, and uh, you just, uh, it generally shouldn't happen because uh, 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 the UV would go through the light, uh, the lenses anyway, so they would kill most of them. Um, so you only see fungus only when you see some old lenses been lying around in the cabinet or in, in the loft for a long, long time. That's when you see fungus growing. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Vicky's, Vicky's got some experience, especially older likers. Yes, absolutely. Uh, um, yeah, older, older, older Leica lenses. I, I had experienced a couple and uh, it's quite uh, common especially the, the Summiluxes and uh, the older Summiluxes, like the 50 Summilux and the 35 Summilux, they all have similar problem with, uh, with fungus, uh, which is a sad thing to see because uh, uh, there's one, at one time I was trying to buy uh, a, a 50 millimeters version one Summilux. Uh, it was a beautiful lens, the exterior is almost like new. And this guy was selling for cheap and, and, and it's already a warning sign when right? someone's selling such an expensive lens for cheap. Then went there and I traveled. I actually took a train, an hour train from London to see him. And then, um, and when I saw the lens turn up to the light, shine the uh, the flashlight over, I saw the fun gets it. Sorry, mate. Yeah, I don't think I can fix that thing. And then um, it's not something I would like to buy even at that price. And it, no matter how good the condition is, and it it is uh, it doesn't. I don't think it's ruined. Basically, the lens. It was it was very severe. Let's let's put it another way. And uh, that's all. Uh, you can kind of tell by the condition of the lens, even though it's right, like almost new. There's no scratches or anything like that. But the lens suit has already got um, uh, what is it? The uh, uh, the green stuff coming out from the actual metal itself. So it shows that it's been stored for a long time. But not just stored. It's stored incorrectly. So uh, that's something you probably want to make sure you don't pick up something similar. And. Uh, <laughs> And David got some story to tell. I learned the hard way a camera shouldn't be on top of the <laughs> No. Did it drop? You didn't drop it on the floor, did you? Oh, oh, no. Oh, no, no. No. It happened to my coffee, lucky. <laughs> not my lens. Oh, not my camera. Oh, dear. That is, oh, gosh. Heartbroken. Oh no, that that is not good. Oh gosh. Right. Um, going back to some of my photo, I want to show you that uh, some of the rainy environment. Because I showed you these pictures earlier, right? You know about uh, uh, I used the One X to capture a proposal earlier this year. So I want to show you this as well. And um, so these are another photos. Uh, very similar. I, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, the guy's trousers actually soaking wet, and then uh, you can actually see the dots there. And, and some of the rain drops you can probably still see, but. Uh, uh, I just want to show you, you know, like a, a, a one thing that I really do love about Olympus uh, camera gears is that uh, how rugged they really are in real life situations. Yeah, I know a lot of people, uh, a lot of camera manufacturers are talking about, you know, oh, I got a weather seal system there, I got a weather seal lens, and this and that. Um, but you really can't beat, you know, Olympus because I, I, you know, before I switched to Olympus, I did try other cameras you know i don't want to name them all because i don't want to be biased just to olympus just because i'm using olympus now but i did try other system uh it, you know you guys know that from canon so i can use canon as my uh, my prime example Pri uh, my canon 5d were weather seal but they uh, um but they it failed on me multiple times not just once multiple times in rain um uh, this is something i perhaps a little bit gutter, you know, you pay so much money for a cam, professional cameras and, and they fail, you know, during the shoot. Uh, so that's why, I, you know, when I was using Canon, I always had to have two Canon bodies in the back, one as a spare, just in case it happens again. And uh, that's not very good. Uh, but it's, it's, it's always been a professional practice to have spare bodies, you know, if I go to bigger shoots and stuff like that. But nowadays, when I go out and shoot, and uh, uh, I tend to just have my E1X uh, with me uh, because I, it just from my own experience for the past four, four and a half years now, four and a half years since I switched from Canon to, uh, uh, to Olympus, the E1 Mark II and the E1X hasn't failed me once. And, uh, and I have conducted 
a lot of photo shoot and uh, I'll give you some numbers and uh, the last two years each year I've been doing 150 to 180 photo shoots per year that's excluding weddings and a good and another 30 weddings on top of each year and uh, so it's a lot of photos going on a lot of photo shoot I've been taking it out everywhere uh, I also you know not counting the travel that I've done and uh, and it hasn't failed me once I managed to turn it on every single time it would not you know do anything silly and uh, just in contrary to a big name like Canon the system really did fail on me okay fair enough you know I didn't use the top of the line 1DX whatever you know and that uh, uh, but that besides the point the 5D wasn't a cheap camera it wasn't you know a beginner level camera it's a professional camera and uh, so this is something that I you know I always tell people you know try it out you know I know people all everybody says they're weather seal cameras but you may be okay in light rain, but if you really do work on it and uh, you're going to really horrible conditions, horrible situations, uh, you will find yourself in trouble, you know. And uh, I'm not saying it will happen, but I'm saying that there's a high chance of happening because uh, it happened to me multiple times in the past for different syst uh, for, for different cameras I use. Uh, but Olympus so far, touch wood, I've got wood here, touch wood, and uh, then... It hasn't happened, and uh, even in all these horrible, rainy situations and uh, and things like that, I got other photos I I couldn't dug up at the moment. But uh, it it just it it just hasn't failed me at all, and uh, it it's just cool. It's cool, and uh, see if I can get another photo uh, to show you guys, and uh, from rainy stuff, and uh, maybe this one. I'm just looking at a camera here. Nope. And also some people talk about low light stuff as well about Michael Fortho. I'll just show you one photo here. That is cool, right? This one, this photo is, let me put it right here. Uh, this photo was shot indoor in Hampton Court and uh, it was ISO, uh, it, I believe it was 3200 and then it was shot at 1.2 and 17 millimeters. Uh, there you can see it's perfectly fine. And then uh, uh, it's no problem. All you need to know is how to uh, like to take the photos with the correct lighting and uh, in this case it's, 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 it's fine even though it's very dim it's actually dimmer than the photo but I of course exposed to the right exposed to the right it's almost like a song right it's exposed to the right and <laughs> and oh we're just slightly overexposed and then uh, uh, to get make sure that you know you you don't crush the shadow too much and trying to lift it up in post and that's the key um, <laughs> nothing is more weather still than TG3 you're right there, Vicky, and uh, the TG3 is a monster in terms of weather seal, and of course you can dive that camera in, in, in water. Uh, same as all the subsequent cousins, you know, the TG5, TG6, you know, the all brilliant cameras. I love those, the little, little guy, you know, I always have, I always have it with me. That, that's my backup of backup, you know, I always have the little guy in my, in my camera back. It's just so tiny and so rugged, I just shove it in the front of my camera back, and I know even if you get run over by a car, you will survive, and that's, that's for sure. And uh, let's see other things here. And David has, uh, ooh, with an ugly condition. Well, how ugly is that? <laughs> 70 to 20. Is that, is that externally or actually internally? Uh, that, that, that is something that you, you have to make sure. Uh, sometimes I don't mind a kind of bung, uh, a banged up lens, you know, from, from a third part, uh, from used, you know, uh, from other people. As long as the internal and the uh, lens elements are still good you know and uh, I have a couple of used lens are completely destroyed externally you know like scratches scarf dents whatever you name it is there but the, the lens is still actually really good condition so uh, I, I, I use that lens for some other applications before when I was in Canon days and uh, you know, sometimes you know it's okay to get used lens and I do get a lot of used lenses depending on my budgets and other things and uh, I know actually they talk about lenses a lot of people did ask me about uh, how many lenses do I have uh, uh, okay, before I became an ambassador, so became I started this channel, I don't, ha I didn't have that many lenses. I mean, I have enough to do my jobs, and I have my usual Trinity zoom lenses, the two point eight zoom lenses. Uh, that's the sixteen thirty five, seventy two, uh, twenty four to seventy, seventy two hundred in Canon days. Then I have a couple of primes, of course, the thirty five, the fifty, and also the eighty five. So these are kind of my six lenses I have, kind of what I use it for. I have one more macro lens, the hundred two point eight macro in the Canon. Um, but in my Olympus day, I have exactly the same thing. So I have the 17, uh, 7 to 14 2.8, the 
12 to 40 2.8 actually not mine it's a loaner from olympus so i use it and uh, i don't have to return it just loan it from the company so okay i have that at the moment uh the 40 to 150 2.8 uh, then I have the 1725 and the 45 1.2 Pro and also the 1.8 Cousins. Uh, so I have the two sets of lens there, exact same focal length, one Pro, one non-Pro uh, for different purposes. Because when I travel, when I travel, I actually use the 1.8 versions because they're lighter and smaller. I put it in a smaller bag. Uh, also depending on where, where I'm going. If I'm going to Amazon, for instance, I'll, I'll take the Pro lenses because it's weather seal. But if I go on just general holidays and uh, just like day trip or weekend trip away, I'll take the 1.8 any days uh, because it's actually nice. No problem with the, uh, the image quality, superb, nice and sharp, and also very tiny, very small. So I can just carry my dinky little bags and just walking around and uh, just enjoy my, my, my trip out, right? You know. For Tau, it's all about enjoyment sometimes, you know, don't overload yourself with kits uh, when you're going out or uh, going anywhere because, you know, I made that mistake when I was young. I made that mistake when I was uh, at the beginning level of photography. I would think, oh, I sh I, just in case I, I miss the moment, I should carry this as well. Oh, I may need to use that. I may need to use that. And I take that as well. So I end up with a camera bag with like, like 20 lenses, you know, like I'm just joking, but uh, just with loads of stuff. Uh, and when I get there, when I get to the location, I will have like a 15 kilo back in, uh, in my back. Uh, like a couple of miles down the road, you know, I was walking through the city. Like I was really like covered with sweat. And uh, I was telling my, my wife, is like, oh, I'm naked, man. <laughs> I'm naked. Can we just go to a coffee shop and just rest for a bit? And that was my experience. So you know, don't, don't repeat that stupid mistake, you know, and then uh, just, just be, be mindful about the gear that you want to carry. Just be mindful of what you want to shoot. Be mindful about what you want to achieve when you go traveling. Do you want to have a holiday or you want to have a photography trip? You know, that's two different things altogether, yeah? If you want to incorporate photography into your trip, just enjoy yourself, right? You know, you need to, you need to have that enjoyment. You don't want to feel tired, you know, the halfway through the trip. And then uh, you, you, got to, you got to, yeah, live you know, when, when you're traveling. And so that's that's one thing that I truly appreciate the size of Micro Four Third. I'm pretty sure you guys all do as well. And uh, the size really did help in terms of travel photography and traveling. And then not so much at EM1, you know, you can even go smaller, like the uh, the EPL, the Pen F, for instance, or the EM5, they're all fantastic camera. They're lightweight, they're small, and they're very capable. Uh, you can do a lot with those small systems. And uh, uh, that means that you, you can just enjoy life you know and just capture that moment uh, 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 without feeling you know kind of awful you know like your body I mean I'm talking about your body your body's not complaining when you take that photo uh, that's the main thing you know you got to enjoy yourself right and uh, and also uh, uh, talking about cameras I was I was I had something in my mind I completely forgot now suddenly got this blank moment suddenly okay good uh maybe it'll come back to me later on so any other question you want to ask me and i think i've been on about for over an hour i'm just checking my my em1x battery gauge surprisingly it's still got 47 minutes left okay wow that's from one battery yeah so i managed to use 43 minutes worth of battery from the em1x first battery while i'm already conducting one hour and 11 minutes of live streaming <laughs> that's not bad that's not bad okay fair enough okay and uh thank you guys for joining me today and i hope you guys enjoy it. i hope you guys really uh uh, uh enjoy the talk about today's uh accident thing you know and um, i'm i have a lot more to share but i'm you know, I don't want to bore you guys. Uh, it's it just some fun conversations there. And uh, uh, next week, hopefully, I'll get some other topics to, to talk about. If you guys have any suggestions or anything you want to ask me on to talk about it, don't forget to leave some comments down below. And don't forget to, yes, subscribe this channel and then also put a thumbs up and share, talk about this, uh, talk about me. And uh, so I get more boost in the algorithm and get searched and get recommended. And uh, of, of course, you can follow me as well on Instagram and uh, also on Facebook. I do daily live stream between uh, 11 to 11.30 a.m. every day from Monday to Friday. I have a weekend off so I can do my own thing. And uh, yep, <laughs> bye for now, Vicky. And uh, so, yeah, I'm hoping you guys will enjoy uh, the rest of this week. 
and if I can see you tomorrow on my Facebook live stream, that's great. If not, don't worry. I'll see you next week, I'm sure. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Like, once again, thank you for your support. Continue support is greatly appreciated. I cannot really say uh, uh, more thanks enough to you guys and how, how nice of you guys to be supporting me through this difficult period as well. Uh, there are a lot of things I really did plan for this year uh, for a lot of different shoots, a lot of different projects, a lot of different videos. I want to bring up the production values for this, even though I already mentioned I didn't make much money from YouTube, and uh, but we we're still hoping to increase the production value for this uh, channel and just, just bring some more entertainment for you guys. Uh, but at the moment, everything's scrapped now and uh, there will, it will take us some time to to recover for sure. And um, But I know always oh, good as long as our health is there, we can do it, right? You know, and we, I have hands here. I have my camera. I can do it, right? And uh, so I'm not too much worried about it. And uh, But all I can say is that thank you. And thank you for your support. So uh, all of you guys, uh, uh, I will see you next time. And I will definitely stay tuned for the community page. I will announce the topic. Uh, uh, I didn't do it last week, but I will do it for next week. So uh, stay tuned for that so you know what to expect and what to talk about. If you want me to talk a little bit more about photography in general and then uh, also to do some critique sections, uh, uh, yeah, let me know as well. I'm happy to receive your pictures and talk about it and discuss about them. And I will start talking about my picture. How's that? You know, I'll start. Dis yeah, discussing about my picture, how I take that shot or whether I think it's a good shot or not. I'll tell you about that next week. Okay, anyway, so I shall see you all and have a good day, my friends. And then uh, for the rest of the week, have a good weekend and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.